start my day at the Pelindaba nuclear facility in Heart of Beersport, South Africa. Here, I'm peddling for power. Imagine if you had this at home. How long it would take you to make a cup of tea? How long it would take you to uh, get some the heater on? How long it would take you to watch TV? We watch TV a maximum of four hours or five hours. Imagine doing this for five hours straight. One of the key challenges facing Africa is ensuring access to reliable and clean energy. South Africa relies heavily on coal to meet its energy demands. 90% of the electricity that we have here in South Africa is made from coal. And that 90% is able to be distributed to different parts of South Africa and that's how we get our electricity. Some civil society groups believe that we should be moving away from coal. Coal mining needs a lot of water. Generation of electricity through coal needs lots and lots and lots of water. Five of these can power a household for a year. Just five of these. Versus how much coal do you think would need to power a household? So it's estimated that a kg of this um, would make or would produce 300,000 times more energy than the coal itself. So this produces a lot of energy and people are saying, let's go for it. It's just a little bit, but for a lot of energy. Just overlooking the Pelindaba nuclear facility is a family home of Tia Holm. Tia is an award-winning environmental educator whose home runs entirely on solar energy. She also has years of experience advocating for a greener and more sustainable lifestyle. One mustn't even think that nuclear is the answer. We have a country with 300 out of 365 days sunshine. We need to use it more. We can use um, solar as a base load. Uh, all what we need to do is to figure out the storage issue. We also have wind, especially around uh, the coastal areas. We also have biogas, which I think those three would actually contribute towards um, a sustainable, you know, renewable energy base load if it's a mixture of that we use. So yes, uh, many people have concerns about nuclear, especially in the environmental um, the environmental impacts, but let's compare it to coal. We get a lot of carbon dioxide from coal. We're using too much, like now we know that the reserves are going to be completely depleted in 2025. So there are things that we need to be putting into place to replace that when you know the time comes. And nuclear is, is one of them. We're using just a little bit for a lot of energy at the end. The other part of nuclear, it's, it's dangerous. It's intergenerational environmental degradation. The waste that comes out of nuclear power stations, it can be stored, but it causes um, environmental degradation. The waste is highly radioactive. The waste that we make now is very little because we've got one reactor. But there's a potential that we can have more than one reactor from what we hear from the news. So, um, Valkut, um, any place, any place that's chosen to have a reactor will be able to look after its waste. And what scientists are also looking at is smelting. So, the big thing, the big fuel assembly, then they want to melt that and separate the radioactive part from the non-radioactive part. And the radioactive part will be this small, so we can just store as much as we want. But it doesn't matter what we do, we're always left with bins full of rubbish. In 1989, Nexa dumped too much nuclear waste into Harpisburg Dam. You can imagine it's still there. It doesn't go away. So a lot of birds died, lots of um, natural life floated there on the surface and we were dead. And they said, oops, sorry, we made a mistake in the algorithm that the allowance that we have to put, the amount of waste that we are allowed to put into the rivers and in the dams. Nuclear energy is, it's a very nice move for the country because uh, we're using technology that we're used to 
we've got 50 years, Safari's 50 years experience plus Kuberg's 30 years, 80 years experience all combined. So this is just a way of making other people's lives better. If we stop nuclear energy, we are stopping nuclear medicine, we are stopping electricity at Kuberg, what is that going to benefit people? If the sun was bought, then we'll hear the argument that this is the best ever source of um, base load that we have. But unfortunately, nobody owns the sun. But when it comes to nuclear, it's something that we are saying no to nuclear. It's, it's dangerous, um, it's costly, and um, it's not wanted. Everybody's made out of a million atoms. And what we're doing here is we're focusing on the atom itself. In the beginning there, uranium wasn't very important, but here we're using uranium oxide as a fuel. And we're focusing on the uranium atom itself. So what happens is we start off with a neutron, which is a subunit or a particle found inside the atom, and we bombard this with the uranium atom. And what happens is it will split. So we are making the atom a little unstable so that it will split. And so the energy that we get from that and the products that we get from that, then the energy is nuclear energy. We are trying to get to a point where we can get energy without polluting the earth, getting clean, efficient energy.